Hi everyone, little video here um, about a pretty contentious issue. Um, can you say no to your dog or not? A um, couple of extreme versions out there in terms of dog trainers, um, some that pretty much insist that that's all they need, um, normally focusing on corrective measures to train problem behaviours rather than teaching what we would prefer. And then the other extreme, of course, is that you can't say no. Um, so let's look at it. Uh, I personally feel like um, disagreeing is a normal part of life. Um, when it comes to our dogs, uh, a dog that doesn't understand, you know, when I, when I communicate that's enough, is a bit of a mole to be around, pretty painful. Um, same with people. Uh, anybody that doesn't understand what that line is can be really intolerable after a while. So I do actually think it's appropriate to teach it. I just don't think it's appropriate to focus on it. And I think there are some really key fundamental parts of understanding behavior that we should be aware of at least when it comes to saying no in understanding what it is, what are the implications of uh, what we're actually doing and what are the dangers of what we're doing. Now, as, you know, as most of you know, I really do focus on positive reinforcement because I honestly think that it is a much better and nicer way of training dogs. Um, focus on teaching what we would like them to do rather than putting emphasis on what we don't. We acknowledge it, um, but then rather than dwell on it, we teach and reward more than focus on no. But what we've got to remember is that no doesn't actually teach that. So constantly saying no to your dog actually just leaves them very confused because they completely lack clarity on what it is you wanted. They are not psychic. Now, like I say, there are some factors that if you're going to say no to your dog, then you must consider and be aware of. First of all, how present the dog's brain is. 0.5 seconds and it is no longer doing that behavior. It's that fast. If you don't catch the dog in the act or within 0.5 seconds of uh, doing it, then it isn't doing it anymore. And so the dog's brain's moved on. Big example of this would be, you know, you walk into a room, you see a dog take, having taken a piss, and there's a puddle of pee, and you can see it, your human brain can relate the two, but your dog's actually finished and is taking a step that way. If you interrupt that behavior, you're interrupting walking, not peeing. So imagine how much confusion you and fear you can create uh, if you get your timing wrong. They also don't have the ability to contemplate their actions. So sticking them in a naughty step and asking them to think about what they've done is completely fucking stupid. Don't do it. It's, that's, that's a human thing. Don't do it to your dogs. It's um, yeah, bonkers if you think about it because they've got the cognitive thinking ability of a one-year-old to 18-month-old child. So when it does come down to it, uh, no, shouldn't really be seen as anything more than just an attention grabber. Something that catches them in the moment interrupts their behavior, turns their head towards us, so that we're now in a position to teach. And then we reward them. So we interrupt, we put that brand onto us, and then we can go, hey, do this instead. But how many of us focus and dwell on what it was they were doing? You know, we might catch them doing that on one of the behavior, and we go, no, you fucking idiot. And we dwell on it. I, I used to be so guilty of it. And do you know what? I probably am every now and then, let's be honest. But I try and catch myself as often as possible because my human brain, not done to 10, it's just my human brain not being able to keep up with theirs because they're actually that present. Another factor that we must consider when we're considering whether we're going to say no and essentially use punishment as a technique for training our dogs is um, consistency. Now, consistency comes in two forms. It, you have to keep one is consistency of intensity. Now, if I say, no, don't do it, and my partner's going, no, don't do it, guess what? What Dog's more likely to listen to more, one more than the other. So you've got to be super consistent in how intense you are every time. Otherwise, the dog only learns to ever learn, uh, not do it at that one behavior. And unfortunately, you're probably gonna to have to up it each time as well. So another reason why it's kind of flawed and kind of why people end up so frustrated because so many of us feel like we've already told you, um, but you're not getting through. But really, again, we're probably putting too much emphasis on no if that's the way we feel about it. The other one is timing. Remember dogs are only, dog behavior is only ever them trying to achieve positive consequences for them. So they're doing something they actually, or either don't know 
what they were meant to be doing or because they find it rewarding. Um, and every time they do complete a behavior, it reinforces that learn, learn association of, okay, this is what I was meant to be doing, or yeah, that actually was great, definitely gonna do that again in the future. So you gotta catch them 100% of the time. If you're, even if you're not there. So for example, common example of this is jumping on the sofa. You know, if you don't want your dog on the sofa, when you're not around, don't give it access to the sofa. Because you, you telling it off every time it jumps up on the sofa makes it learn that you don't want it on the sofa, but it doesn't actually mean that the dog doesn't want to be on the sofa. It will learn that you probably just not worth it if you're around. Um, but essentially, it is the comfiest place in that room. So of course, to try and achieve positive consequences, it's going to find itself more uh, on there more often. Another fact, another thing to consider is that if you don't go in intense enough to actually stop the behavior, because essentially that's what you're trying to do is stop a behavior by introducing a negative consequence. Um, if you don't go intense enough, then the dog goes, well, risk reward, risk reward, I'm gonna probably do, do it anyway. Again, it can lead to a massive frustration, um, but because they're not moral creatures, they don't know and they've got that, have, don't have a cognitive they don't know the difference between right and wrong, they just know the difference in terms of consequences for them, good and bad. They don't even know that they're annoying you. But what can happen is we end up drawing a lot of attention to a behavior that we didn't want them to do. So a good example of this might be if the dog jumps up at the kitchen counter and sure, like once it might've got food off there, but after that you're like, nah, you shit, get down. And then it goes near the kitchen counter, nah, you shit, get down. Nah, and you repeat, 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 repeat. You probably ignore it though, for just being anywhere else. So your dog learns via consequences. The most rewarding place for me to be is up, up, up near the kitchen counter because there might be food. Plus you don't give me attention any other time. So we have that negative bias that if we really concentrate on it, we really could be more aware and try and remove that from us. It's, it's never gonna happen 100%, but if you try and get notice yourself noticing all the negative stuff that your dog's doing, Flip it. Start to, like I said earlier, and acknowledge that you don't want to do it, but then focus on what you would like it to do and start rewarding that dog for being in his bed more often. At the time, guess where he finds it? If you start to leave things for the dog to chew in the bed, over time, guess where you find it? So again, it's that perception and can go a long way in the way we train our dogs. Uh, another factor to consider is um, what over-reprimanding can do. Uh, so many people, unfortunately, mistake, um, confuse fear and respect. Constantly reprimanding your dog doesn't make them respect you. It makes them look over their shoulder out of fear of you. It makes them anticipate that they're gonna get told off every two seconds because you're being a bully. So that's not, it's a crap way for the dog to live and anticipating and getting in trouble all the time. And it's a crap way for you to live. Uh, you didn't get a dog for, to live that way, to constantly anticipate them fucking it up. So again, our perception, if we focus on what we would like them to do, it can improve the quality of life for you and your dog. Another final really big factor to consider is, and we talked about this in terms of the dog's mind uh, video that we released last week. What frame of mind are they in? If they're in the training brain, uh, the, that, that thinking side of the brain, sorry, then they're able to learn and that's where we can use our attention grabbers and interrupters and put ourselves in a position to teach them interrupting their behavior using a verbal cue. Um, and, but not, we can't do that if the, I don't think it's appropriate to do that if the dog is not choosing its behavior. That's when the nervous center is activated through hyperarousal, fear, stress, anxiety. It's not choice. And so it really, in my opinion, is massive issue for people that are training dogs uh, corrective measures and the thing is when that danger brain and when that adrenaline center's on your no has to be so intense that you're probably going to be having to use physical force to get through to that dog um, and that's that's not dog training that's not choice for the dog it doesn't even can't choose to be in that frame of mind and yet we're disagreeing with it and um, something else that I think so many of us really don't consider is we put the dog there we're the ones that put it there in the first place. So a little bit of accountability from us in terms of I chose for my dog to be in this situation, I probably shouldn't reprimand it. It goes a long way as well. So uh, be, 
the dog did not choose. So that's why using there's a, there's a big difference between saying no to your dog and using punishment techniques and physical force to control the dog behavior as well. So what we end up doing is shutting that dog's response down. The dog has responded to a stimulus and we've shut that dog down. And essentially we're gonna to have to go in so hard that it learns a negative consequence and it never does it again. It's not, that's a crap way of dog training. We should be desensitizing gradually. The other thing of course we could do, you know, this is what we see check chains and prong collars do, is like, it just triggers them into a freeze response which is very close to fight or flight. And so can really tip it over the edge. Um, and ultimately, you know, this is, like I say, this is not training a dog what we would like them to do. And what we're really aiming for is learn helplessness. It's just dog bullying. It's a shit way of training a dog. So in a nutshell, guys, yeah, you can say no to your dog, but there's a big difference between saying no, using physical force and punishment um, no should just be an attention grabber and really you really need to recognize what frame of mind your dog is in and the consequences to saying no to that dog in that frame of mind might have in the long run so I hope this makes sense guys have a great day